Okay, so we have a complex circuit, but it's a fairly simple complex circuit. And we know the resistances of everything involved, and we know the total voltage that's being applied to the circuit. And, and this is sort of a realistic situation, because normally we can look at the resistor and see what the resistance is, or we can measure the resistance of an object. And we can usually control or choose the voltage of a source. So now we want to sort of figure out everything else about the circuit. Uh, the question, who knows what the question might be? What's the current on resistor 3? What's the voltage on 4? We're just going to solve the whole circuit and find absolutely everything. So, for a simple review, quickly, we've got four resistors here, obviously. 1 and 3. Number 1 and 3 aren't connected in series, they're not connected in parallel. I don't know how to describe their connection, so I'm not going to. But I do know that 3 and 2 are in parallel. An electron coming here can either go through 3 or it can go through 2. It can't go through both. They're in parallel. 4 and this whole group are in series because if an electron goes through somewhere in this group, it's got to go through 4. So they're in series. It's got to go through the battery. It's in series. It's got to go through resistor 1. It's all in series. So we've got 3 and 2 connected in parallel, connected in series with 1 and 4, and we know the total voltage is 9. The only new piece of information that we're going to use here, which hopefully isn't new for you, is Ohm's law. Which, of course, is V equals IR. It's usually written that way. I think for historical reasons, I equals V over R is maybe a better way to think about it. Um, but regardless, we're going to use that several times. The nice thing about Ohm's law, if you ever have V and I, you know R. If you ever have R and I, you know V. Each resistor or source has three things, V, I, R. And if you know two of them, you automatically know the third one because of Ohm's law. And that's all we're going to use it for. We start off not knowing two things about anything, so Ohm's law is not going to come into it. But we know all the resistances, so let's calculate the total resistance. Looking on this branch, we have the two in parallel. Again, I'm starting here because these are the only two that are connected simply, in parallel. And looking here, we're going to find the total resistance of sort of this branch of the circuit. And that's 1 over 20 plus 1 over 5 equals 4 over 20, 5 over 20, but we've got to flip that over, 20 over 5, which equals 4 ohms. So this thing has an equivalent of 4 ohms. These two together, this guy has 3, 4, 2, they're all in series, 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 2 is 9. So my total resistance is 9 ohms. Now, I know V and R for the source, so I'm going to use Newton's... I'm not going to use Newton's law. I'm going to use Ohm's law here, V over R, 9 volts over 9 ohms is obviously 1 amp. So I'll put 1 amp through there. I knew 2, so I knew 3. If 1 amp is leaving the battery, 1 amp has to go into this resistor. So this also has to have a resistance of 1. Hey, I know I and R, so I can find V. 1 times 3 is 3, so the voltage is 3 volts. Okay. 1 amp goes into this junction, so 1 amp has to come out. Ooh, that looks confusing. Let's hang off one second. We know for sure that when they come back together, there's going to be 1 amp. If there's 1 amp here and here, there's got to be 1 amp through here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that. Again, I know 1 and 2, so Ohm's law tells me I know V, which is 2 volts. And now, if I think about an electron making a full circuit, it has to lose 9 volts, it loses 3 there, it loses x here, and it loses 2 there. It loses 5, so that means it's got to lose 4 here, if it goes this circuit. These two are in parallel, though, so obviously 2 and 3 have to be the same, so that is also 4 volts. And lo and behold, now I know 2 for both of these. So, what is i? i is v over r. 4 over 20, which is 0 0.2 amps, 4 over 5, which is 0 0.8 amps, and just to double check, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 equals 1. So that makes a lot of sense. I could have done this directly, using my brain and a little math, I could have thought, hey, R3 is 4 times as resistive as R2, which means that 4 times more current will go through 2 than 3. See how 0.8 is 4 times 0.2? And they add up to 1, so there was really only one option. 4 times compared to 1 time is resistive, so 1 fifth the current goes there, 4 fifths of the current goes here.
but I didn't need to do that in my head. I was able to figure it out by working backwards as well. Now we can try a harder one. 